In this video, we'll talk about phase portraits, which is an idea similar to phase lines for getting general behavior and overall results for these sorts of constant coefficients of equations. So in the case of autonomous equations, we had phase lines. Right? This is the idea of, I'm gonna draw a little axis and mark out the equilibrium solutions and then put arrows between based on where things are going up or down and use that to classify what's going on with this sort of equation. For these two component systems, when they are homogeneous like this, they are also autonomous because the derivative here equals something on the right-hand side that does not explicitly depend on t. So because of that, we're able to come up with a similar idea like a phase line for these systems. And what we get here is what's called a phase portrait. Basically, we're gonna do the same idea as the phase line, but we now have two components here. We now have an x, y plane of also just a single axis, right? Autonomous equations only had one variable, the y, the function we're solving for. So I had a one dimensional object here for my phase line. Because I now have two components and a two component vector here, we're now gonna have a two dimensional object or a phase portrait for this setup. Let's do an example and see what this looks like, and then we'll talk more about the process of how you actually go about constructing these. So I'm gonna look at this system here. Vector x prime is minus five, one minus four is zero times x. And we found the general solution to this one previously. The general solution here was x of t is c1, one, four, e to the minus t, plus c2, one, one, e to the minus four t. So now we wanna take this general solution and, and sketch out what they look like for different values of c1 and c2 on an x, y plane, where we're thinking about x as the first component and y as the second. So I can draw some axes in here. And I think about this sort of being x1, the first component, and this being x2, the second component, or x and y, depending on how you want to set up your system. Now, there are a couple things I can draw in here right away that I know are going to happen. So first of all, this has the equilibrium solution at zero. We know that, so I'll put a dot there. That's where it's gonna be. For all your problems, this will be the only equilibrium solution you have is the one at zero. Now, there are a couple of solutions I can draw really, really easily, and those are the straight line solutions. So I know that from this equation here, if I set C2 to be zero, I get one four e to the minus t. So one four is going horizontal at one, vertical at four, it's gonna have a slope up like this on either side if c is positive or negative. And because it's e to the minus t, I know if I start on that line, I am tracking in towards the origin. Because as t goes on, I will get closer and closer to zero because it's e to the minus t. Similarly, I can take the other solution, the one with e to the minus four t and draw that one as well. That's gonna be at a shallower slope because it's one one, not one four. And because it's e to the minus 4t, this is also going in towards the origin. Now, what happens everywhere else? Well, as an example, let's pick c1 to be 1 and c2 to be 1. Right, we got these green and purple lines because we picked one of those to be 0. Let's pick them both to be 1 and see what happens. If I pick them both to be 1, I get that for this particular solution, my function here is going to be e to the minus t plus e to the minus 4t, and 4 e to the minus t plus e to the minus 4t, if I pick both those coefficients to be 1. Now at t equals 0, this starts at 2 comma 5, which will be somewhere up in here. And as t goes to infinity, this is also going to go to 0, because I only have negative exponentials there. Now, how is it going to go to 0? Well, if we notice, as t gets bigger, this term here is going to 0 a lot faster than this term, right? Because this is e to the minus 4t, not e to the minus t. So this term will go away really, really fast, but this only goes away kind of fast. Which means, in terms of the general solution up here, we're gonna lose the component that came from the e to the minus 4t term first, it's gonna go away, and our solution is basically gonna look just like this one here as time goes on. Because this term's gonna drop off really fast, it'll drop off slower, so we should approach the origin, because we're going in towards zero, along this line. So our graph's gonna look something like this way, it's gonna come in and approach the origin along this line there. And if we were to track backwards out, I would see that as t goes more and more and more negative, this term gets really big, faster than this one does, 
the term that survives for t going to minus infinity is actually this one here, and we'll actually end up looping back around to flatten out towards this line, the purple line, as t goes to minus infinity. And the same process happens no matter what I pick for c1 and c2. As t goes to plus infinity, I'm going to go towards the origin along this line, because that's the term that survives longest as t goes to plus infinity. As t goes to minus infinity, I'm going to approach this line heading away from the origin. So you can fill in a couple more curves here based on that information. So if I start somewhere in here, I'm going to do the exact same thing. I'm going to approach zero along the green line and flatten out along the purple, going the other way. If I start over here, I'm going to come in this way to approach with the green line like this, and again leave out along the purple. Now, for this solution here, why couldn't I come in just like this over here? There's one particular reason why, and that's that I would have to do that. I would have to cross over this curve here. And remember, we're in a case where Eudicus theory applies. We haven't talked about this with a statement for it yet, but the same sort of theory applies in the sense that my curves cannot cross. Because we are dealing with an autonomous situation, and the theory applies, these curves cannot cross. So there's no way to get from this point up here down to this side, because I have to cross this purple line. None of these lines can cross, and they have to meet the right conditions. They have to approach zero and infinity along the right lines, and that gives you a good idea of where to sketch everything out. So for a solution down here, it must approach along the green line and leave along the purple. And based on how the curves are set up, there is only one choice of green and purple that works for any initial condition. Be able to figure out from there how to sketch this out. And so with this picture, you see some sort of weird funneling going in towards zero, but every solution does end up towards zero at the end of the problem. We'll talk about the terms later, but this is called a nodal sink for this situation. Because everything flows in, it's a sink, everything flows in down the drain in the middle, and it works like a node. That'll contrast what we see for complex next time. Okay, so what's the general process like for actually developing and drawing these pictures? The drawing phase portraits. Your first step is always to find the straight line solutions. We know there's only one equilibrium solution at zero. The straight line solutions, we're going to find the two of them that correspond to the different eigenvalues and eigenvectors of this matrix. Then we want to add those straight line solutions to the portrait. And we want to add an arrow indicating where the solution goes in or out of the origin. With these will always be lines with the origin. So we want to indicate where the solution is going in or out by putting an arrow on the line. And this arrow is based on the sign of the eigenvalue. Positive means away, negative means in. And then you want to fill in the curves in between these straight line solutions. And the big things to keep in mind for this are that you always have to follow arrows. Curves cannot cross. And you'll need to use the value of the eigenvalues themselves to figure out which term is more important to determine which curve you should approach as you go to infinity or minus infinity. And this will give you the way to set up and draw these different pictures for these phase portraits for these equations. You get an idea of what's going to happen to the solution over time and how it's going to behave. If you follow those steps, you'll get something like what we drew for the previous example. Right, we drew in our straight line solutions. We had our green and our purple straight lines. We drew the arrows indicating directions, they both went in. We analyzed and saw that the e to the minus t is more important as t goes to plus infinity because this term goes away super fast. And so curves coming into zero must come in along the green line and everything must follow the arrows along the green line into the, into the center. And then going away, you'd hit the purple line, so you trace it to the purple line in each direction on your way out. There's a basic method there, and following that process gets you to be able to draw these pictures for a variety of equations, at least when the eigenvalues are real and distinct. The other ones are slightly more complicated, which we'll get to once we address those types of systems.